Black WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. I'm uh, exhaling on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. The, <laughs> the hashtag is Crab Cake Tour. I have not shaved. I do. I did shave the other day. I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm punch drunk, Don. I'm, I'm in the middle. Is it James Taylor tonight? Is it Jimmy Buffett or Guns N' Roses in town? Am I on the Eastern Shore? Am I in Southern Maryland? Uh it, it's been a little whirlwindy and, and I'm used to this, right? Cause I did the baseball tour and that had its own sort of, where am I? What day is it? And I I'm enjoying the hell out of this. You know, I am. And when I can cobble together eight hours of sleep in a hotel room in Leonard town, I can get up the next day and breathe again. <laughs> well, it's, it's been, it's been remarkable. You know, I asked you as you embarked upon this, we, we had an over under of when you would be tired of crab cake. So we'll, no, we'll not. get it. We'll get into that a little bit. No, I had I a couple saying, of subpar <laughs> crab cakes along the way. I am. I'll be honest with you. This is, this is true. I don't have a crab cake pick for tonight. As I sit here right now, I have five or six places and my wife and I are based on the weather. I called this a wild card day, right? So if Tom Perez fell in today or if Jamie Raskin, any of the elected officials, people we could chase down, I don't know where I'm getting my crab cake in six hours. That's well, crazy. I just, I just tagged you on Facebook. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it on one that looked incredible. A friend of mine had sent it to me and I thought you've got to be kidding. Let me see if I can find the name of the place for you real quick. Uh, it's called uh, the local oyster. The in local Baltimore. oyster. The local oyster. This thing, Nestor, is a crab cake on top of a soft crab on a sandwich. And I, I tagged you and I said, well, they they, they serve every week. They serve char, uh, char grilled oysters at the farmer's market. So I see them every week. I, Don, here's where it is. I'm not doing a local crab cake today. I'm going to do a crab cake somewhere south of Annapolis, west of Frederick or south of Columbia. I, I'm saving Baltimore for the end of the tour. This is a Maryland tour. It's my one chance to go to Edgewater and get a crab cake or go out to Olney and get a crab cake or go down to Gaithersburg. By the way, I don't have a place in Montgomery County. So can, can you text Jamie Raskin right now and ask him where in the heck I'm getting a <laughs> crab cake? In of, course, he's vegan. of course, he's vegan, right? Yeah. He's going to send you to get a vegan crab cake. But we'll ask some of our friends. Uh, you know, we'll ask. Senator Van Hollen and some of the other folks from down there in, in Montgomery County, where to go get a crab cake. Well, I had know. a PG County crab cake with your friend, Donna Edwards, a uh, former Congresswoman, uh, who was just a lovely human. We enjoyed, uh, we spent an hour and a half hanging out, talking about health and cancer and the Harbor and national Harbor and how politics get done and how she fought to ever have the project done. And now lives there. Like I'm just meeting these awesome people and I'm having really good crab cakes. Well, you know, Nestor, it's interesting you mentioned <clears throat> National Harbor, and I know you you were down there with the congresswoman, uh, who is a good friend, a good friend of the show. And Bruno and Mars. <laughs> I and, and Bruno Mars. I ended up down there the other evening uh, with my daughter's family and the kids. Uh, they have what they call a lantern festival down there, and I said it was sort of a, a throwback to my uh, 1960s days, peace and love and the Beatles and Joan Fiez and everybody writing messages of hope on lanterns and sending them out in the harbor. And then they're environmentally conscious. So they go out and, and get them. But as I looked at that and, and you, you're going to be shocked at this uh, because, you know, I like to go out and get around and visit places and go to shows. That was my first visit to National Harbor. Mine as well. I was blown, blown away. away, blown and away. I couldn't help but think of my good buddy, former county executive, Prince George's County, Wayne Curry, uh, when he stepped up to uh, just uh, more than a one hundred million dollars of county funding for the infrastructure. And I actually I said to my daughter and son in law and, and to Linda that and I said, you know, I'm going to jump on my phone real quick and I'm going to punch in. Wayne Curry and National Harbor and look at some of the articles from the Washington Post. And sure enough, <clears throat> the haters back in the year 2000 were out in force, you know, to give away. It's never going to happen. The, the National Harbor is never all, all of the things that never, 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 never are going to happen. And Nestor, all that, I could think about sitting there is who dreamed this up? 
How Who about did this that? piss off? How did this ever happen? How much dirty casino money was involved here? How much civic money was involved there? You know what Donna Edwards told me? That there were eagles on the property that nested there across the Anacostia River and the harbor there. It's, be- it's beautiful, right? And it's I said, gorgeous. how did it never get developed? How did property of this value never get developed? And then who fights over it? And you find out it's Donna Edwards and Wayne Curry and whoever else was. Yeah, they saw it. I mean, people, people with a vision. Disney wanted to come in there and put a Disney World, from what I understand. Yeah. Well, that, uh, you know, that part I don't recall. No, that's true. This is Donna Edwards telling me this the other day. So we're going to get her on. But she also said that the that the people came in and cut the trees down to make the eagles go away, so that they could get the project done. Now that's well, kind of crazy, right? Like there, th- there, there you go. I mean, there's always ups and downs when you do these kinds of projects. But when I looked at what has developed there, looked at, and you don't want to always, <clears throat> you don't want to read more into something than there is. But I have to tell you, Nestor, and, and you tell me if it was your experience when you visited the other day as well, I was struck in such a positive way by the diversity Diversity. of the people at national. Right. Am I right? It was striking to me and my wife to see all of it Don, We stayed there. We got a hotel room there. And the only reason we stayed there is because Donna Edwards invited me. And because of this crab cake tour and I have called it. Here's the word for the week. I think you've seen me write this on online and I used it a lot last week on the air. I used it in ocean city serendipity. It was serendipity. Yeah. And I said that when we, when we showed up at the crab cake cafe on Friday at three o'clock and by the way, we showed up at three o'clock. We showed up at three Oh three. Okay. At three Oh three, the Congresswoman was wearing her mask and we were not. And she was seated outside. She is, she has MS. She has, uh, you know, um, immune issues and seated outside. I went in and ordered the crab cakes, the whole deal. And she said, as of three minutes ago, we have a mask mandate in PG County. Now, I'm going to put this to you, all right? I'm, and I'm going to – you think about this, okay? Because you're a hip guy. You know who Bruno Mars is. You know he's a big deal. We stayed at the AC down in the harbor. We walked, and it was a much longer, more arduous walk than we thought, around the lake and up the hill to MGH. It was 92 degrees when we were walking Sure, up the hill I know the walk. At 6.15. It was beautiful, but it was hot. My wife's sugar got a little low. We get up to National Harbor. We waited in line. We gave up our phones at Bruno Mars. You know that? I saw that. They locked them up. They for lock you. your phone in a, in a thing. You keep your phone. If you want to use it, you walk out to the lobby. They unlock it. You use your phone in the right. lobby, right? My wife has a diabetic issue with her iPhone. She kind of needed it with her watch. So we go through this process and we go inside. Have you ever seen a show at National Harbor? I have no, it was my first visit was for this land. Okay. Oh, process. so you've never been to MGM. Okay. Fair I enough. Not. So it is, uh, it's a function room with maybe 4,000 seats, maybe 4,500, maybe not even that many, maybe 3,500. It's a small room. Okay. But it's not like a sexy Vegas room. It, it's more like a convention square room with balcony seating. It's more like the anthem, but not nearly as nice, like the seating way. It's more square. So it's a long stage. And we are in the last row, Don, literally second to last row. We row in. There was one row behind us. And I had the cheap seats, but they were in the middle. And there are 5,000 people. The mass mandate was at 3 p.m. I thought the concert was going to be a bunch of foo-foo, she-she, high rollers because, like, the ticket prices were outrageous. We had $200 seats on the roof. Everything down below was 1000 bucks, 800 bucks. There were It was more than half the room was $600 or a really expensive ticket. I was not expecting this diversity, youth um, of people that were there. It was 70% African-American. I would say it was – uh, 60% above the age of 40. Like it was an older crowd and it was a Friday night. It was a really expensive ticket. Like I could have sold my tickets for $800 a piece. Like it was crazy like that percentage of people, Don spending that kind of money 
every person knew every word to every song and sang it at the top of their lungs. How many people were wearing their masks during the show, Don Moeller? Mm, I'm probably going to get this wrong because I'm going to jump in once we wrap up National Harbor. These I'm, are people I'm, dressed to the nines. I understand. I'm going These to are give people you, in their best outfits. They were yeah, I'm going wearing to give you my shoes. Okay. I'm going to give you my Disney experience after this because I think it ties Please. into what you're talking about. I'm going to say 98% wore their masks. 85% had masks on. Okay. 85. Now that's... That's you a know huge what? number for me. Huge I was number. very heartened by that. N- Nestor, I spent four days with the mouse uh, down in Orlando. Wasn't sure what we'd find uh, the day before we left. Very similar to what you experienced in the harbor. But the you're be- outside <laughs> there, right? Like, but you well, remember inside you're both. To get on rides, though, right? You're both, and and in lines, yes. Yeah, so you're both, and they reinstated a mask mandate inside. And when you're in line in Disney, you know, against what the idiot who runs the states doing but thousands and foul. Fa- yeah. Well, you yeah, we can talk about the governor who I, I it's 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 just a head scratcher. We'll talk about Ron DeSantis. Were there people that go to Disney while. and get to the front door and say, I'm not going in. I want my well, money back. I there you mask. go. There I'm you sure. go. That yeah. this is a story of hope because I think your experience and my experience at Disney where in four days. There were only two knuckleheads who made an issue of it. Now, think about that. Thousands and thousands of people, two knuckleheads. So, so you I wore your mask you, everywhere in the park, indoor and outdoor, for four full days. Did, yeah, did not all uh, outdoor played it by ear. If we ended up in a place where there weren't a lot of people might have taken, you know, for a, a educated break. people, this isn't hard. My, my wife not, and I walked around MGM without a mask a little bit, but once it got crowded, we put a mask Correct. on. You That's get in ex- an elevator, you put a mask on. Exactly. Like, it, it, so, it isn't all that hard. During Bruno Mars, there were times in the show where I felt like I wanted my mask on. I got a little hot. Correct. I took it off. You know, so, I was dancing with my wife. We had a nice time. It was educated people. These were obviously vaccinated people because they're wearing masks to begin with. Because right. if you're vaccinated and wearing a mask, you're feeling like I can see Bruno Mars. Well, I can dance my ass off and not get the plague tonight and not get sick a week right. from Monday and give it to somebody else. Right. We're, you know, we're, we're heading out soon to hear, uh, see James Taylor and Jackson Brown so are we. at Merriweather. And we're going to be in the pavilion. My guess is that we're going to mask up. I mean, I just think it's going to be crowded and we're going to be more comfortable. The point that I walk away with, Nestor, is this this grasping for straws that the the Ron DeSantis and the 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 Abbott governor Abbott in Texas, they're trying to do they're trying to score these cheap political points. And it will work with that 30 to 31 percent. But what I took heart in, and, and I'm, I'm trying to be a positive guy here, is that <coughs> almost everyone in Disney, I mean, I say almost, I, you could, I could, it wouldn't have been an exaggeration for me to say 100 percent. Two knuckleheads out of four days, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, one guy, you know, there were we were on this little raft going over to Tom Sawyer's Island at, at the Magic Kingdom. And you can tell that the Disney people have been very well trained, as they always are. And they're very polite and say, you know, just just a reminder, folks, that we, we can't leave the dock, you know, for this 90 second ride across the lake to the island unless everybody puts your mask on. So thanks. You know, very polite. And, you know, immediately everybody does except one 19 or 20 year old and the guy against says, sir really uh we can't leave uh so thank you if you don't mind and he and he puts it up you know right away you're going what an idiot why me so as he goes to get off luckily our wives have more sense than my son and me the guy goes up to the young disney person and he rips his mask off and he just stares him in the face maskless like a fool you know just like a fool and 
you know, Jeff speaks up and I speak and then both our wives say, let it go. But it's, it's, you know, one idiot and you just wonder how much he has been spurred on by all of the babble uh, coming out of Fox. I mean, you've got Tucker Carlson running around, hanging out with dictators. I mean, you, you really can't. Make up some of the stuff, but let's I stay spent on the, the afternoon plan. with Heather Mazier over in uh, Chestertown. I got to meet her and we were discussing the antics of Andy Harris and whether that's going to play or not. And, you know, I, I had the experience of being at the White Marlin Open uh, right. where, you know, well, I want to talk about Ocean F. City. Biden but... trucks in Southern Maryland. I mean, right. I've been, you know, no CNN, literally CNN sucks on the doors of businesses where I'm expected to go in and pay for a crab cake. So I. I and here's the here's a fascinating thing, Don. And and um, I went through this with Bill Cole. If anybody you enjoy the recon with Don and I, you'll probably enjoy my conversation with Bill Cole as well as Dennis Kalatsis this week about some of this. Don, there were places that had CNN sucks on the window of the place, and the place doesn't get internet. I mean, we talked about internet availability. Right, and right. by the way, Heather Mazier said to me, of all of the issues of Andy Harris and guns and politics, of all the things that there could be an issue about, masks, all of that, right? On the Eastern Shore where she is, the number one issue that humans come up to her with on the campaign trail, and you can listen to the interview at 98 Cannon, which had a wonderful crab cake, a lot of Baltimore connections. There was a lot of serendipity on the tour on the Eastern Shore. Um, the number one issue, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi sure. and, and <clears throat> having, if you live there, you have to drive into the city to have a Zoom meeting at the Royal Farms or wherever, right? Because you don't have Wi-Fi. And Dude, putting pictures and video up on back roads with my wife in Southern Maryland in a rainstorm. I'm blown away by how many people don't have Wi-Fi yeah. and also think CNN sucks. So well, there really is a correlation between education and Wi-Fi. Oh, no, no. There's a divide. And, and I saw some polling data yesterday. It says, you know, we've actually, as, as the Delta variant rages, it, it has actually made people even more uh, entrenched in their positions. Uh, I, I, I saw, you know, I saw Mike Lupica and, and, and you and I know Lupica through his sports writing, my grandson's knowing because he writes books for young, young kids. Uh, and, and Lupica basically lost his mind this morning over the unvaccinated. And he said, look, this idea that there can be two sides, to every story, it's not the case in this one. This one is, you either, you know, you're either not dumb or you're dumb, right? In well, other words, I, I go back to being a kid at five years old, 1973, with Mr. Connolly, my principal that you knew over at Colgate right. Elementary School. I don't get into school. I don't meet you. I don't come to Dunlop Correct. High if I'm not vaccinated. And that's, and that's going just to happen. the way it is because we're not going to make our kids sick. Right. And that's going and to happen polio very soon. for crying out loud. What the hell's wrong with you? Well, and I think as soon as the FDA and hopefully in a couple of weeks, uh, if you believe some of the things coming out of the FDA in a couple of weeks, they're going to give it permanent authorization. At that point, I think you'll see it added to the vaccine list. But so we do have this we do have this epidemic of the unvaccinated. But my takeaway was that in a place like Disney World, which makes you happy anyway, I mean, that. The joke that it's the happiest place on earth. I mean, you, you can why. I mean, I'm there with with a 14 year old and a 10 year old. And Did you, you ride Soren, the most important. Uh, yeah, I rode Soren twice. Is your 10 year old a 14 year old ride? Yes, for yes. The first I actually time rode Soren twice. And there are some new rides. There's a there's a Pandora ride, which is uh, basically a, a, um, Avatar, which is Soren on steroids. Uh, there's, really. There, Better than oh my, soaring? Oh, my God. It's soaring on steroids. You actually get on a banshee and go all through Avatar Land. Have you it's, ridden it's, through the uh, the hydro, um, all the food area where yes. they make all the so, food? Yes, did that several times. Actually ate in there. I'll tell you what our surprise was for your, your our listeners who are at some point venturing. I'm down just having Disney. a crab cake tour. You well, this, I'm going to come back to the crab cake, but this is fascinating. <laughs> the One of the oldest and most people would say hokiest rides in disney it's small now world. been made into a movie is the jungle cruise of okay. course you know fake crocodiles and what have you well for the first now they've upgraded it they've spent a few million dollars to upgrade it but amazingly 
<clears throat> what we did this time, just the way the calendar worked out, schedule worked out, was we rode it at night. We had never ridden it at night before. So my little tip for everyone with kids out there is don't ride the Jungle Cruise during the day. It's a totally different ride at night and very, very cool. But it was Were the fireworks experience. back? Did you get some fireworks? Fireworks are back. Okay. Um, they do a nice job with the characters for the kids. They don't come up and sign the autographs like they did and let the kids hug them, but they position them in a way that the kids get the uh, the character experience. I'll tell you what I did, ha- what you did see, Nestor, particularly on day one, and, you know, you've heard Damie and others. <laughs> you went down. I just had Damie and Jack on the show for an well, hour. There's a lot of video so, coming from J.M. Clayton. So, so yes. you know you, you know what I'm talking about. You see the labor shortage everywhere at Disney, particularly at the Magic Kingdom, which is the most crowded of the parks. Uh, one of the things that Disney prides itself on is you never, ever see a, a, a speck of trash uh, the cast members are always smiling, upbeat. I mean, that's the that's the quote unquote Disney way. Uh, day one, I was a little concerned because you didn't sense that at the Magic Kingdom. It was too crowded. Um, there weren't enough people. And I thought, oh, man, this is a shame. Uh, you can see this is a product of the pandemic. Well, this is an Ocean now, City issue. You're you're describing correct. exactly what Rick Meehan and I discussed. What, so you saw what, it in Michelle's, Ocean City as well. Oh, a million percent. And the J1 workers not there. Right. If you spend any time in Ocean City, they're in route. Literally, when I was with the Thrashers folks and I was with the Jolly Roger folks, they were literally picking kids up from the airport that had come here to work uh, and, and, and had been cleared to do that. COVID, all of that. So... Um, and I took a picture of a sign uh, in Cambridge, and I haven't put it up yet. I've taken so many pictures, right, on the trip. I don't have time to put them all up. But one of it said, like everyone else, we need help. And the no, you employment do issue it. in this country is amazing, right? Like, there's jobs. Everyone's hiring. Like, every sign along Route 50, not just in Ocean City, in Cambridge, in Easton, everywhere I went, people in Southern Maryland, everywhere. And we do need. I mean, we still need. We need legislation to mandate a $15 minimum wage. But one of the things we're seeing is that supply and demand is beginning to work. And I saw today, I think it was in the, maybe it was in the fast food retail industry for the first time, the average wage is above 15. So that, that, that is significant, but you, you know, Nestor, in addition to that, what, and I texted you a couple of times during the tour. I mean, this is your baby. You thought it up and I find it really exciting. I find your post exciting. It's it's a it's this travel law. I said it's it's Rick Steves meets Guy Fieri, and and it's it's a really cool thing. And what I was and as somebody who loves Ocean City, I've been going to Ocean City since I was two years old, maybe one year old. And I know it can be it can be cool and hip to to put down Ocean City in this day and age. It's not it's not cool enough. It's not hip enough. Other places are into vogue but what your visit captured for me was really ocean city and again the joy and the freedom that you feel when you go over that 90th street bridge or when you come in if you come down 50 the old way and come in over the 50th street i bridge. haven't gone over the 90 bridge in 25 years yeah so like, you go I down through the city way. you go down through the city it wouldn't and even feel like going into ocean city to me like there i don't even go. know what it looks like over there I, okay so I, no you, offense you to ocean pines yeah. i just i haven't been there in 20 years you you go old school and you know when when you're talking and showing the lines at thrashers and sitting down with the mayor and capturing the excitement of the white marlin open and showing the rides and, and it, it just, there, you, you know, there's something about ocean city again, that takes me back. And I think takes many, many Marylanders back to their childhood. So what, what's your takeaway? You've been at this now, uh, you know, eight or nine days, you're traveling around the state. What's your, what's your takeaway so far? Ah, uh, crab cakes are different, you know, everywhere. Um, The Eastern Shore and the freshness this time of year uh, that if you get and I spoke to Damien, I spoke to Jack Brooks from Jam Clayton about this. I've talked about it a little bit on video, but more now that I'm getting. I thought all 30 of my crab cakes would be awesome off the hook that if I go to a crab house somewhere on a river, no matter what, the crab cake would be 
an eight and a half or a nine. I have not found that all the way through. I have found some tens, like and in and like literal tens. And and what makes them a ten? The freshness of the meat, the way it's prepared, um, the fact that they've been doing it a hundred years and they take it really seriously. I find some crab houses don't take crab cake seriously because they fry stuff. They just fry, they steam crabs and fried stuff, and that's what they do. And they have some old recipe that isn't a great recipe. I, I don't know what to say. They haven't changed it. And it's not to my taste where I need to be on it. The other thing are condiments, Don. And you couldn't have told me this. I would have said broiled or fried would be it. Part of it just is, tell me about the piece of crab you're using. Is it a Maryland crab? Is it fresh? Is it female? Is it male? Was it picked here? Um, is it a Texas crab, which could be saltier? Is it Venezuelan, which may be a little more blanched? If it's Maryland, it's going to be sweeter. I've learned that. I mean, it's almost like the difference between a fresh watermelon or a fresh peach or an heirloom tomato this time of year. Let's start with the meat, and then let's talk about your your recipe and the slurry, and then let's talk about the technique. I had a crab cake the other day, and I didn't know it till I had it, and I'm sitting there with – and by the way, Baltimore has been the serendipity here, Don. All of these places – and I didn't do this on purpose, had some Baltimore connection. The Tostin family that runs the Embers in Ocean City, now Blue, B-L-U. Sure. They're from Pimlico. It's a Pimlico recipe. Um, the family at Fratelli's, and there's now there's a Fratelli's in Eldersburg. There's one out in Frederick. They're Salisbury, but they're a Greek town. They're East Baltimore family. Their uh, daughters got into Salisbury in the late 90s. Dad said, I want a better life for my family. Moved to Salisbury and opened Fratelli's. Incredible crab cake, right? Um, tasted a little white pepper in there. I kind of liked it. I'm at blue, and you and I argue broiled and fried. Now, this is brilliant, okay? Because you always talk about cast iron skillet for your fried chicken and all that. Right. And I don't know that the Tostin family did this on purpose, and I don't know if it's something I'm going to steal. Are you ready? Because I love fried, but broiled is the right way to not destroy the meat. The blue crab cake, it's served on a skillet. And it's served at such a hot level that the bottom of it takes on a fried oh, yeah. consistency, like a like a like a caramelized pizza. Sure. And the top is still broiled. So is Dennis Colazzo's coined party at the top, business at the bottom. And there I'm like, go. Amen. Amen. Right. So at Suicide Bridge, I had a crab cake that was so soft and delectable and sweet. And then I found the orange female row in it. And then I realized that I talked to the owner afterward. He's like, that crab came right at it, right at here, right, right in front of my place. And I'm like the brackish green grass and the bucolic bridge and the pictures and the flowers. I'm like, no wonder that crab cake tastes so delicious. Harrison's in Ocean City with this technique and they serve it on the skillet. Just soft crab. I said, where does the crab meat come from? You see that bridge over there? My crabbers, they crab right there. And I'm looking yeah, at it out yeah, the bay window yeah. at the inlet. You can't beat that, I right? mean, I, like, right. I brought Dennis, and it's not that I don't love you. You were at Disney World. And Dennis gave me a $58,000 vehicle to drive for a couple of days. Jack Brooks, because this is the way they are on the Eastern Shore. He tours me his place. I have 18 minutes of videos of the women picking the crab in the factory from Mexico. Like literally great stuff. this Olympic thing, right? He says to me, I got a, I got a pound of crab meat for you. I'm going to give it to you my cooler. He goes to his truck, gets me his Playmate 1998 red cooler, right? With the, sure. puts the pound of crab meat in it and says, take it home. And I'm like, Jack, I don't want your crab meat. I'm sure it's the, I'm sure it's $60 a pound. I, I don't want it. I can't, I'm having another crab cake on the, on the, in Southern Maryland. Mark. I take it, give it to Dennis. Dennis takes his crab meat and he's never made a crab cake in his life and mixed up this crab meat and said he can never eat crab meat anywhere. Right. So I told him he's got to go to Fadley's to buy it now. He, he, there he it, it is. There. So I'm learning fresh is everything. I'm learning politically about people with, Trump stickers on the back of their car and a lot of people that have abandoned it, quite frankly. I mean, I have not seen nearly as many Trump signs and like all that on the Eastern Shore as I thought I was going to, as I've seen, quite frankly, in Cecil County when I went up there a couple months ago. I, 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 I'm, I'm meeting nice people. I, I you know, good, good yeah. people <clears throat> everywhere who are sharing the same thing I'm sharing, which is a well, cake and a beer in most places. That, that was another takeaway. 
And, and I think we have to somehow get back to this. I've written about it recently. We ended up in, in a, one of the things that's happened at Disney is they've built these Skyliners, these gondolas that go to four different parks now or several different parks and from four different resorts. And it's a game changer. You just get on. You don't have to wait for a bus. You don't even have to wait for the monorail. You get on these things and they take you right over. So they see 10. So we ended up in a car one day with a family from Alabama, deep in the heart of Alabama. You, All right, you, so see, you get roll, some diversity. Here roll, too. roll tide roll. Right. And just could not have been a nicer family. And we, we, it was their first time there. So we were sharing, giving them some tips and they had young kids and we had, we've done it with our kids and now with our grandkids. So we, we, we've got the Disney thing pretty much figured out. And I said to Linda and to Jeff and Sandra, when, when we got off, I said, you know, I said, there's a good example. I said, there's no doubt. I mean, they, they said to me, Nestor, this family said to me, we've never been further North than Kentucky. Their world is in the wow. deep, deep South. Never been further north. And I joked, I laughed. I said, well, it really is okay if you come north. <laughs> we won't Don, hurt I'm going to say this to you, fine. and you've laughed at right. me. I had Rick Meehan on. I know you know Rick from Taos and UB. Uh -huh. He and I have, you know, some similar roots from where we're from. I said to him, have you ever been to, to Deep Creek Lake? He said, never. Okay. So same state. I've never been to Deep Creek Lake. We talked about that. I promise you. Southern Maryland was much different than the Eastern shore, much different. Right. And even though they're voting the same way, allegedly or whatever, very military is a lot of that in Southern Maryland. Military right? base in Southern Maryland. I, sure. I, I saw several. Right. So. Right. I, I, I saw that part of the world and I saw it, it a little differently than the Eastern shore. And I'm thinking to myself, there are lots of people indigenous to Southern Maryland, not naval people, indigenous who maybe have been to Baltimore five times in their life and probably not this century. Right. To just, to, to just, you know, flat out that I've never been there. They've never been here. No, 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 no. They there's have no a divide. Here. There's they, a divide. They say aquarium. I got an aquarium in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> but my takeaway was, this was a really nice mom and dad. You'd want them as your next door neighbor. And there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, you, you can make assumptions. Not everyone in Alabama voted for Donald Trump, but most did that. These folks were probably a Trump family. And I said to Linda, it's somehow we've got to reconnect on this personal level because they, they were a delightful young family. They probably looked at each other and said, I bet you those people are Biden people. And hopefully said, hey, man, they seem like pretty nice folks, too. So. We really do. And they didn't think to. you were going to come get their guns or any of that. Right, stuff. No, right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you do, you do lead, you do lead with though. You're right, and you've I, done this. Don, I had a conversation, and it was a beer-soaked conversation late at night at Coastal Salt with a guy. I, you finish yours, and I, because I got to no. tell you this story. This I know. Is a crazy, I was just going to say you always county lead. story. When people say, where are you from? And you, you, you say Baltimore, and you get that look in their eye, and then you just smile and say, I got to tell you. It's about a lot more than the wire. Do we have some, and then they chuckle because you can see that's where they're going. They're going, my God, you got your Baltimore, Baltimore. And then you say, yeah, but you know, it's really a great place to live. So there are things to connect us. So tell us your late at night story. All right, Don, I just threw a, a, a status out across all of my Facebook to get some help in, um, in, in Montgomery County. So I just threw an APB there out. There we go. Because I just don't have... I went back and I checked a couple of places and I don't want to go to these places because the crab cake's not going to be good enough Like right. that, that I should be there. So, I okay. So I'm in Ocean City on the last night I'm in Ocean City. So I've done the weigh-in of the tuna. I hung out with Evan Brown from State Fair and my friend Brian Eater from the Chaucer who were fishing in the tournament. I've been down on 14th Street. I saw 137-pound tuna. I even put up my Spanish mackerel, which looked to be a 70 or 80-pound Spanish mackerel that I caught in Australia when I, the one time I ever fished. Would maybe want to fish. Everything about this week is maybe you want to go fishing. Sure. I said to my wife on the Solomon's Pier, <laughs> We should go fish. We should try. And she's like, you're, you're serious. And I'm like, I think we would listen to music. I watch people having family fishing outings, oh, listening yeah. to earth, wind and fire on the pier and having the time of their lives. So I, I so I'm, I'm into this. So 
I'm in Ocean City without my wife on Wednesday night. I'm staying on 15th Street. I got two beers in me. My work's mostly done. I had been over at Blue. It had been raining all day. Uh, I was with Tom Perlazzo, who's just a wonderful guy, uh, who I knew from 20 years ago, Sam's brother. So go check all that out. Tom did an hour and a half of radio with me. Go hear the whole story about it. He, he was a defensive back at West Virginia playing football out of Cumberland, right? So he's another guy from Cumberland that went to Ocean City that never went back the other way. And he was giving me some Cumberland hints for next week. So I'm literally walking down 15th Street. I saw a pizza place that sucked. Like I looked at the pizza and I'm like, I'm not eating that. And I'm, I text up and I had eaten at the um, fishtails with Batman earlier. Delicious. I eat tuna. I, I love fishtails. Delicious. I didn't want to go there again. I wanted to do something different. I wound up at coastal salt. Everybody told me how great it was going to be like, <laughs> but it was closed on Google. It was like 10 minutes to nine. And it was like closing down on the boardwalk on a Wednesday night. And I was a block away. And I'm like, I was literally on the boardwalk going to walk down to the inlet and get a slice of pizza at Tony's or whatever, right? Or just go down to Dough Roller, just do a, a, a get a walk in, get this. My do an Ocean City, food. right? Drive by, right? I'm like, I'm really hungry. I need some vegetables. I walked into Coastal Salt. I said, Will you let me in? They're like, You might be able to get to the bar. They were closing down. I walked in. Girl says to me, I'm like, I'm starving. Can you give me a salad? She's like, You got seven minutes. I'm like, We're going to work this out. She was super cool from Philly. Had been there, told me I had to go to the Hobbit and get a crab cake. There's no one in the bar. They're closing down. There's eight people, me at the bar, four pack of people at the main bar, back to the ocean. I got my hair down, like literally, literally trying to just order. I said to her, I'll order anything that doesn't have crab in it. I don't want any crab. I, I don't want any crab. So my hair's down. I don't look like me. I'm just in the corner. Dude yells. Nasty Nestor. <laughs> yeah, dude. How are you, man? You're on your crab cake tour, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. I said, who are you? He gives me his name. He says, I'm Vaughn. So I'm like, Vaughn, Vaughn Rocco. Okay. So anybody knows Vaughn, tell him I had. So they closed the place down, brought me this. She said, our Jamaican chicken. Th I'm like, Jamaican, done. Bring it. Ordered it. It was unbelievably delicious. I have this conversation, so I'm going to have some fun now. Are you ready for this? So this guy and his wife know me. His wife knows my former partner, Steve, very well. Find this out. Through Accelerant, Bill Cole, we start dropping names. We have all these mutual friends. Great. They're with another couple. Other couple has never heard of me, knows <laughs> nothing of me. They're from Kingsville, Perry Hall. There and we go. start to talk, right? <clears throat> know nothing about me. Don, I'm talking for 40 minutes. This person's very trumped up, clearly, right? Like we're talking and we're just BSing about crab cakes and we're talking about the Orioles, the huge Raven fan, all that. 40 minutes in, the guy says to me, I'm like three quarters of my stage. He said, you ever do much with the Ravens? And his buddy's like, Dude, you're embarrassing me. Don't stop. And I'm like, stop talking. No, no, stop no, talking. no, no, no. I love this. This person, I'm in my 30th year of radio. This person loves sports and drives a pickup truck and is a different kind of life. MMA, new John Rollo, right. had six guns and wanted to tell me why they were all important. Like all of that. And we had this really sane, interesting beer, hour long conversation that ended with a fist bump because it's COVID and all that. And I just had this wild evening in Ocean City having a very varied conversation about all of these things we had in common, including Guns N' Roses, Van Halen, fishing, great Mar all of this stuff. But politically, we're on a different planet. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and, 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 and that's what we have to – and again, we can be on a different planet. We just can't be mean and and, uh, and i got him to the point where he realized that the guy in mandalay bay with all the ammunition was a bad idea i at right. least got that admission at 10 p.m and i felt like all right i don't want you to stop hunting ducks you know like i you know like but right. there there is a spirit to all of this that is going to have to come between humans from alabama no. and catonsville and humans from baltimore and kingsville and that's where I think that's where we stop this week's recount. We come back next week, Nestor. I, I want to be fatter. I want to. You'll be fatter. <laughs> we're gonna talk. We're gonna get an update on the crab cake tour. I, I do want to debrief the Olympics. Uh, uh, you know, we, we'll have a, a week sample size of Adley Rushman 
at triple a. So that will be fun. And, uh, I want to talk about some bad behavior that's taking place out on the PGA tour. I read this morning about some fans and it's just, again, just a head scratcher to me, why people feel empowered to act like idiots. So go get some crab cakes, have some fun and, uh, report back next week. Hey man, it's, it's weird being on the road. I had three guys trying to start a fight with me in fishtails because I didn't order my ahi tuna quick enough at the bar, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it's, you see everything. I try to oh, take no, the you're good. Oh, no, you're going to see right? this. You try to take the good. I have met so many awesome people. That's it. You know, along this thing the first 10 days, and we're having a blast, and we're seeing new stuff. We've had bad weather. We've had great weather. I've had great crab cakes. I've had not so great crab cakes. Uh, you know, I've had side dishes that were phenomenal. I had some crab soup last week that was outrageously delicious uh and i have yet to have oyster stew and i got to go back to harrison's in ocean city i've had thrasher's french fries right i had i, I got an offer to ride the bumper cars if i wanted to so this well, is i know you're going to do i know you're going to do your your ken island thing we got to make sure we get you some uh half and half soup uh down there at the fisherman's inn it's i guarantee you, you're a fish aficionado where do you go it's, for your crab cake on ken island where, where do you where, where well, i tell you there there are a number I've said to you before, there are a number of really good ones. This is one of those places where you will not go wrong. In other words, you'll get a great crab cake at the Narrows. Uh, you'll get a phenomenal crab cake at the Bridges. And if you go to the Bridges, I've been I know to the how Fisherman's. You, I've had the crab cake at the Fisherman's a million wonderful years. Wonderful at ago. the Fisherman's. If you go to a Fisherman's, though, you have to get the half Maryland crab and the half cream of crab, the half and half. Greatest crab combination ever. At Bridges, you have to get a watermelon salad to go along with your crab cake. The watermelon salad at the Bridges is, is phenomenal. Is it gold watermelon? Uh, it was not gold watermelon. I oh. keep telling people about your affection for the gold watermelon. But Kent Island is just loaded with great, great crab cake places. You will not be disappointed all right, on man. the island. Well, I am all in. Every day, all day. It is the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. This was the recon. All are brought to you by our friends at State Fair and, of course, Moeller and Gary Realty. Please sell my condo, Jeff. Now, don't sell it right this week, though. I mean, I showings during the tw – this is a strange month all the way around. Also, our friends at Fadley's, uh, Damie and Jack Brooks spent about an hour with me this week. Jack spent an hour with me over in Cambridge. Don – the first video is up on Facebook. I don't know if you saw the crabs coming out of the truck and being processed right there at the uh, at the processing plant in Cambridge. We'll be showing more of that. I'm in Cambridge this week at Travis Todd at Ocean Odyssey having a crab cake there. I'm back in Ocean City next week uh, and still very, very pliable as to where I'm picking up these crab cakes. The hashtag is Crab Cake Tour. You can email me anytime, anywhere. Nasty at WNST.net. Also find me Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, anywhere. The chicken palooza is alive and the wise markets has the gold watermelon. You'll find me on the road. I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570 with big thanks to former Baltimore County executive, Don Moeller. I call him my high school guidance counselor and social studies teacher. We are baltimorepositive.com.